In this video, we're going to be following another tutorial from artisan Jeff Luke to show you how to make this period correct 18th century money wallet. You can find the text tutorial for this and our other Craftsman's Corner projects at nmlra.org slash Craftsman's Corner. To aid in drawing the arcs that are depicted in Jeff Luke's pattern, I'm using this can of WD-40 to get a nice clean arc. You can find the pattern for this money wallet at nmlra.org slash Craftsman's Corner. It'll have all the measurements and the details that you need to make your own cardboard pattern. Once we have our pattern cut out, we can start transferring the pattern to the leather that we're using. I'm using the same leather that I used in our flint wallet video. This is just a nice light, already dyed leather, but we're going to go through and give it some more dye to give it a more complex color palette. I'm using a combination of just a knife with a metal straight edge and my scissors. I'm finding that the scissors are much easier to cut the arcs and the curves with over the knife, while the knife with the straight edge is so much easier for cutting those long straights. Now we're ready to do our first dye pass. I'm using Phoebe's mahogany leather dye mixed 50-50 with rubbing alcohol. This helps spread our dye and doesn't dilute the color too much. When I'm dyeing all of these pieces, I'm making sure to hit all of the edges as well. We don't want those bright cut edges to be showing up as a stark contrast compared to the rest of the dye. Now it's time to lay out this inner card pocket. To make mine centered, it's about an inch and a quarter from each side of the large piece of leather here. We're gonna use some tight bond just to glue down the edges of this little piece so it's tacked on to the main piece. And then we're gonna punch it for stitch holes and stitch it up with some waxed linen thread. Before everything sets though, I'm folding up this front flap here just to make sure that the proportions of the wallet are working. I kind of worried about that inner pocket being too high and throwing off the overall shape of the wallet. But when I'm folding things off here, I'm marking that just so I know in the future where I want to put that front flap. Using my handy little dividers here, I'm gonna mark off about an eighth of an inch in and scribe a line on this inner card pocket, as well as the little, I guess, strap catch that's gonna be on the front of the wallet. This is gonna help me keep my stitching lines fairly straight as we move forward. This groove isn't going to really stand out, but it's gonna recess the stitching a little bit, so the stitching itself isn't gonna be overly exposed on top of the leather. It's so like in Jeff's tutorial here, we're going to be using a wood burning tool to go around and add some edge detail around the flap, front panel top, and the strap edges. To keep everything even, I'm using my trusty dividers as I go along the edges. Using your wood burner to add some of these accents to your leather work is a nice and easy way to level up things a little bit. I find though that it's important to let the wood burner heat up fully before you start anything. Starting with a kind of a cold wood burner to start is going to give you a different looking line than if you wait for everything to heat up for about five minutes before you start burning. Next, I'm laying out the lines for the stitching to attach the strap to the main wallet flap. As a little recap here on how I'm assembling this, this first step is involving attaching the card holder on the inside of the wallet and this strap for the closure. These are the first two pieces I'll stitch up and then the second pass will attach the keeper and stitch up the sides of the wallet. We're following Jeff's advice here and using the saddle stitch to assemble all of these pieces. He says that this is the most durable stitching technique for leather as you are essentially passing two threads through every hole. When sewn properly, even a broken thread will not cause the piece to come apart. This makes for a great long lasting stitch. Moving on, we're ready to fold this second flap over to complete the wallet. Now I took this process really slow. I didn't want the flap to be crooked or uneven in any way. So I went through and measured and used that straight edge quite a bit to keep everything as close to being clean as I could. And here you've seen I, I've used a little bit of tight bond glue just to keep everything together. And I'm putting some of these little clamps on it for about half an hour to 45 minutes to keep it secure. And we're gonna do the same thing for our little keeper strap here. I've wrapped the strap all the way around the wallet the way I want it to sit when it's finished to make sure that I keep this keeper strap nice and centered. To stitch everything together, I'm using some pre-waxed linen thread, but Jeff makes a note here that you can make your own waxed linen thread by just using common melted beeswax. 
Using two short and blunt needles makes pretty quick work of stitching together this keeper strap. You want to make sure to double back a couple stitches as well to fully connect your stitching. And then our final run of saddle stitching is going to be stitching up the sides of the wallet. After that we're ready to put on some Neats foot oil. This is going to help keep the leather from drying out and it's also going to toughen it up a little bit just for the daily use of carrying this around. Once finished I can run my strap through the little keeper there. It's a little tight but it's going to be nice. It's not going to fly open in the weather. And there you have it. A solid period correct wallet that will last for a lifetime. You can now proudly pull out your 18th century wallet without fear of persecution or harassment at your next event. As always, you can check out nmlarray.org slash craftsman's corner to see a full tutorial and high res images of the patterns that you'll need with all the measurements that you need to make this project as well as the other projects that we've featured in the past. We'd like to thank Jeff Luke for his continued contributions to Craftsman's Corner. We can't thank him enough for coming up with these neat little projects and things for us to do on the program. If you'd like to check out Jeff's work, be sure to see the links down in the description of the video, but you can also check out links to his work on nmlra.org slash craftsman's corner, or you can look him up directly via Facebook at facebook.com slash poboygear. For more neat traditional craft projects like these, be sure to subscribe to Muzzle Blast Magazine. You'll get access to 80 years of traditional craft and living history articles just like this.